Hello everyone, this is Jan Kromi and together we will continue the course Interdisciplinary Approaches to Language and its Use 2. In this presentation we will continue our discussion of variationist sociolinguistics and we will focus on the key concept of this approach, namely the linguistic variable. In the last presentation we already introduced this concept briefly. We said that the linguistic variable is an abstract unit which serves us for quantitative description of language variation. This abstract unit can take certain values in a speech of an individual. For example, we may have the ing variable which can have two values, either alveolar in or velar in. In Czech we have uh, the a variable which can take either value e or value a. Importantly, the values or variants of a linguistic variable have the same or close meaning. From the purely semantic point of view, the values of a variable should be interchangeable. However, different values of a linguistic variable differ in the stylistic or social meaning. A certain variant may be considered as being standard and good sounding, whereas other may be perceived negatively, for example. We can distinguish many types of linguistic variables based on various factors. One difference is between continuous and categorical variables. Categorical variables are variables which have sharp boundaries between the variants. This is the case of both examples we mentioned on the previous slide. There is no intermediate form between A and E. And there is also no intermediate form between N and N. On the other hand, continuous variables are such variables whose values lie on a certain continuum. These variables are phonetic or phonological. A good example from Czech might be the vowel quantity. We can precisely measure how long a certain vowel is. For example, the vowel A in the word mám, which means I have in Czech, can be pronounced very shortly as mám, a bit longer as mám, or really very long as mám. Particular values lie on a continuum which can be easily quantified in milliseconds using certain software. Linguistic variables can be identified on various linguistic levels. We already mentioned phonological variables, but we may also have morphological, lexical or syntactic variables too. Since the foundation of variationist sociolinguistics, the focus of most studies has been on phonological variables. There are many reasons for this, but the most obvious one is that these variables are very frequent in spontaneous speech and we can thus gather enough material quite quickly. However, we may focus also on other linguistic levels. In inflectional languages such as in Czech or other Slavic languages, morphological variation may be very interesting. For example, in Czech masculine nouns with soft declension, we may find genitive singular variants a and e, such as in the word řidič, which means a driver in Czech, which can occur as řidiča or řidiče in the genitive singular form. We may also examine syntactic variation. In Afro-American vernacular English, an interesting variable is copula omission. Speakers of this, of this variety of English may use copula as in standard English, but they typically omit it in certain contexts. Last but not least, we may be interested in lexical variation. According to the Czech linguistic atlas, there are various regional variants for garlic cloth, such as strožek, strouček, pazourek, zobek, and so on. We have already mentioned that linguistic variables serve us to describe language variation quantitatively. The easiest way how to do this is to count the ratio of occurrences between the values of an, of an variable. Here we can see a very simple table with made up results. In the table, we have the number of occurrences of the two variants of the A variable. We can see that in this made up results, we have 151 occurrences of A variant and only 42 occurrences of E variant. We can also compute the relative frequencies and we can see that A variant occurred in 
24% of cases and e-value in 21.76% of cases. As I said, this is very simple and everyone can do it. However, imagine that you would try to analyze such variation without this quantification, just based on some recording or a transcript. Quantification of a language variation thus helps us to get a clearer picture of what is going on. A key thing for the analysis of language variation is the relation between linguistic variables and social variables. In this table, we can again see made up results. In contrast to the previous slide, each value of the A variable is included twice, once for older speakers and once for younger speakers. The third row presents the absolute frequency of each variant for the given social group. And in the last row, we can see percentages of use of the variants. From this made up table, it seems that the older speakers use a variant to a higher extent than the uh, younger speakers. The difference between 88.99% uh, and 64.29% seems to be very high even on the first glimpse. If these results were real, they would point out to a possible ongoing language change. However, we would need other statistical methods to examine the variation properly, which is far beyond the scope of this course. But key is that very simple tables like this already give us a good orientation in what's going on. Before we will conclude this presentation, I have one reading tip for you. And this is Sally Taliamonti's uh, textbook, Variation is Sociolinguistics, which is a really good introduction to this field of research. If you enjoy the presentations, we would be glad if you would like them on YouTube. That is all from me now. See you next time.